welcome back to our community. I'm just picking up the vlog camera, you know? Let's do a productive day of my life. So I believe that we can do anything. We can start talking to Baron in January and not get that money till the summer. I'm so organized, it makes it so fun. I feel like I've been doing a lot of like marathon training content and maybe not everyone's interested in that. Like that's not going anywhere because it's gonna be a huge part of my life for the next only 11 weeks. I kind of just wanted to do a regular schmegular day in my life. So today it is 7.20. I am on a mission to get myself out of the apartment by 7.30. We have 10 minutes because I have really been taking my sweet time in the mornings. I like, I literally was up at 5.50 a.m. I meditated. I journaled, like I'm drinking my coffee. Drinking my coffee should not take over an hour. Like I will sit here drinking my coffee, watching YouTube, ending up doing work. Like I was literally just on my computer. And before I know it, it's 9 a.m. And like, I didn't work out yet. So I'm trying to make sure that I get out early enough because I do actually have something I'm filming at 11. So I wanna be getting ready by 10, a lot to do. So I'm trying to drink my coffee and then we're gonna go do my strength plan at the gym. We have a call with my run coach this week and I'm gonna talk through the fact that like I'm getting really almost like burnt out and bored of the same strength plan and I would like permission to switch it up a little bit. So we'll see how that call goes, I'll keep you posted. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm just trying to caffeinate. I'm watching Nicole Winter on YouTube and just thinking about my podcast a lot. Again, I feel like I've been talking a lot about my marathon training. so. I'm just gonna do a little chatty intro real quick about my podcast. So I took a break this summer and now that fall is approaching, I'm like just starting to think about my podcast again, get re-inspired. I really needed the break. I quit my job. I was basically starting a business. I've been like figuring out my new rhythm with that, getting organized with client work. I needed some space and time to get that all figured out and sorted. And also to figure out a new rhythm with my YouTube channel, my editor that I was working with on my wellness and filtered videos no longer had bandwidth. So I've been trying out a few different editors for that. So I just had a lot to figure out on those two fronts and the podcast just started to get a little monotonous. I think I got a little burnt out. You know, I took it as an opportunity for the longest time to interview people throughout my stomach healing journey and then throughout my hormone healing journey. And then I feel like I really healed and I was just interviewing people for the sake of getting an episode up sometimes. And it just was starting not to feel like I wasn't like excited about interviewing anymore. And I think I just got really burnt out. You know, I was doing that YouTube, my full-time job till 7 p.m. That was chaos. So I needed a break and to regroup. And everything was costing me too much money. I was too burnt out to edit my YouTube, edit my podcast. I wanted to do my podcast in the studio and it all just started. You know, I have my videographer sometimes for YouTube for wellness and filtered episodes and it just started getting very expensive. So I needed a reset. That's the update if you've been curious about the podcast, but I'm gonna finish this. And the key is to leave the apartment before I feel fully awake. I think I keep waiting until I feel fully awake and it's like, girl, just get out there. You'll wake up on your 15 minute walk to the gym. It's now 7.23, I'm giving myself a few minutes to finish my coffee and then we get up and get at them because I wanna be home. I wanna be back by nine, like wouldn't that be something? I'm just getting some sleep. God, I struggle at the gym so bad, like, Sometimes I just feel like I know it's less intentional work than at a workout class, but I work harder in a workout class, so maybe that's better. It's really loud out here though, so give me a sec. Let's go home. <laughs> this is not aesthetic, but I just made three egg scramble with feta, onion, broccoli, and chalula. Watching a little bit of the Love Island reunion while I eat really quick. I just had to cut myself off from Love Island because it's getting good and we're just gonna, we're gonna have to save that for like after work hours. So I'm getting ready actually to go to Escape, which is an AI massage machine. I went a few vlogs back to try it out and then I was like, I have to come back and film a full wellness unfiltered video on this. So that's what we're doing today. And I have a lot of client work to do. So we're gonna go right to the gym from there and work from there all day. It's like a co-working space in the main area of the gym, like the lobby. This Kosas Sunbeam is the best thing in the entire world, just saying. First of all, I don't know if anyone else feels the same way because I feel like I was the biggest Nicole and Kendall stan and I feel like not everyone was, but I have to get in 
into it. They were just about to get into the Nicole and Kendall of it all. So my opinion on this might change, but I'm just so upset and feel so bad for Kendall that all of this shit came out. And I feel like he is really genuine and Nicole has just been burned in the past and now she has trust issues. And I'm just so upset for both of them that it's clearly not gonna work out. And she seems devastated and I just feel really bad. I might go back and cold plunge again today. I've gone two days in a row because they now have one at my gym. And I'm just a sucker for it. And if I'm there doing work, like I can't not go in the sauna and cold plunge. So we'll see. I'll probably go again. I never feel the need to get like too glammed up for these because it's like we're trying out workouts and wellness stuff. So it's all good and casual. But I'm gonna talk to my run coach about the strength plan of it all because I was kind of saying it before. It is really hard for me to do the same strength plan twice a week in the gym. Like, I don't know if I just really kind of messed myself up by only doing workout classes for the longest time because now I find it so hard just to like do tough, hard things in the gym. I mean, I guess I could be better about like just kind of blasting music in my ears and whatnot instead of listening to a podcast. That's probably the key because I definitely work out harder on the days that I do that. But I don't know. I just find it really difficult and had the thought yesterday that instead of doing one strength day and then half-assing or barely doing the second, maybe it's better that I do just allow myself to go to a workout class instead of doing two strength days in the gym because at least I'll be max effort and go all out in those. But I don't know, every time you talk to like a personal trainer or a run coach or something, they never really encourage a workout class. I think, you know, Jane Simmons, if you follow her, she's a personal trainer in New York City. She always says random workouts equals random results and intentional workouts equals intentional results. So that's definitely the reasoning behind it, obviously. Like if I'm training for a marathon, my run coach wants me to be doing intentional workouts for strengthening and stability and mobility and all of that but like what if just one day a week you let me do a mega former class so i'm gonna ask her that in a few days but i also don't like saying i can't do something because i'm very aware of the fact that it's all excuses same with when i hated running i would say i can't run i can't run and then i would say when i had a conversation with ethan i would be like okay it's not that i can't run i just don't want to i don't want to commit to training to be able to run so i believe that we can do anything and like Obviously nothing's actually holding me back from going all out in the gym other than myself and my own mind. So I grapple between like, you know, your marathon training, figured out no excuses. And then also like, but what if we did one thing a week that I just genuinely enjoy that's also great for just overall fitness, like a class and it keeps me going. So I'll have that conversation in a few days with my coach and let you know. Gotta get my pre-filming cold brew. Can I do a small cold brew with almond milk and cinnamon tea? Alright, I just finished. I'm very zen out. I have like a mark on my head from the massage chair, but I want to give my full thoughts and review because that's what these episodes of Wellness Unfiltered are all about. It's not just an infomercial of the experience, the trend. I also want to give like my personal opinion. So I was shocked doing some client editing work right now and I have so much to say, but I'm in a co-working space, so I'm going to save it for later. I decided before the mad dash of people that have been at the cold plunge and sauna the last few days after work I'm gonna remove my makeup and stuff now do my sauna and cold plunging now before the rush after work and then Finish work at all before the mad dash. So this is where I'm gonna be Obviously can't bring in my camera, so I'll show you now and there's an infrared sauna in there But I'm gonna do the dry barrel sauna in here in the locker room. Obviously I can't record so I'll see you in a bit All 
All right, this thing keeps happening where I end up recording in slow motion and I lose my audio, I don't even know. So I did film a clip where I was kind of explaining like where I'm at with freelance life since quitting my job and everything and that got deleted. So it's the next day and before I finish out this vlog, I kind of just wanted to chat about how things are going. So if you're new here, I quit my corporate job that I was at for two years. I was at a podcast network called Dear Media. I was working for the Skinny Confidential, heading up their social media. I, you know, pretty much like started and took off their TikTok and mainly was doing like short form content clips, all that. While I was trying to get editors for my own clips because I didn't have time, I was doing that till 7 p.m. every single night remotely. I didn't have like much of a culture because I was the only one living in New York. And during that time, I was looking for people to edit my clips and I just couldn't find like the one who really understood both editing and then also like content strategy and like which clips to pull and which ones would do well on social and like everything I was doing basically in my full-time job. And I would ask around and found that there was really like a gap in the market. So I was like, I'm feeling super burnt out and working till 7 p.m. every day. What if I left and still did this freelance for shows while focusing more on my own YouTube channel? So that I did. And really what happened was like for a month or two after I quit in May, I needed to calm the fuck down. Like I was managing my own podcast production, my own YouTube production, Instagram, TikTok, and a full-time job until 7 p.m. every day editing. Like it was really a lot and I'm now at a place where like I truly just don't want to do that ever again unless it's all for me and not clients if that makes sense but it was just too much so I took a few months to kind of like chill the fuck out and like the way I actually feel a difference in my nervous system it's not normal like sometimes you don't you know like oh yeah I'm burnt out or oh yeah I'm overwhelmed but then when you really come out of it you're like holy shit that was crazy even just like working till seven quickly cooking cleaning then wanting to edit my own YouTube stuff and like rushing to go to bed on time and then wake up and try to train for a marathon it was just like too much and, and like the difference in my nervous system and my happiness and everything could not be born different. The one thing I did not anticipate was I know that when you go freelance, everyone kind of warns you like, you know, the financial stability of it all, right? Like that was obviously the biggest risk I was taking leaving my full-time job. However, I was like, you know what? This is so smart though, because I'm gonna work with recurring clients that have weekly podcast episodes so that instead of like editing random people's vlogs here and there and having like, you know, random content shoots from random companies here and there, like videography, all the random stuff I used to do. I was like, I'm gonna work with shows, I'm gonna have a roster and they're gonna have weekly episodes and I will have that monthly retainer every single month. So like, I won't have an issue, right? So while I like took the two months to kind of calm my nervous system down, I was held over by brand deals and I was doing some outreach just to kind of see if some of my favorite shows would be interested in working with me. And the main thing that has made a huge difference and, and jumping to today, this is the first month where I feel like, holy shit, I have recurring clients that I'm like, in awe that I that these wellness podcasts want I, like I carved out a niche for myself where I am like the wellness girly podcast clips girl and I just like am in awe of the people I'm working with and so freaking happy with it all and like genuinely love doing it because I can edit in my own time like I'm still I love it because there's a structure to it I can still kind of feel like I have a nine to five like I have the work to do every single day but if I wanted to go film something for my YouTube channel or whatnot or film a brand deal I don't have to like have a panic attack that you know, I'm doing it during my lunch break or I already took lunch or whatever. I've been very, very happy this month, but leading up to this month, it's been really jarring the difference between, which I feel like no one talks about, bi-weekly pay and net 30, net 45, net 90, which is most client work, but mostly brand deal work as well. So what I mean by that is obviously in a full-time job, typically you're paid bi-weekly. So no matter what, I knew I could pay my bills. And now I'm gonna take you through a brand deal process and a client process really briefly. So a brand deal. Let's say we're gonna start with January. Let's say in January, I'm talking to Target and we are negotiating rates, exclusivity, how many clips I'm gonna post for them on TikTok. Am I gonna do a YouTube? Like we're negotiating, sending a contract, all of that. February comes and I'm shooting the content. I'm, I'm editing it, sending it to them for a review. They might require a reshoot or some edits. And then I'll, you know, upload it by the end of February. So I send an invoice end of February, March 1, let's say, and they could not pay me for up to like six months. For a brand, I don't really have control. I can't be like your payments due in 15 days. Like for brands, they kind of tell you that it's net 30, which is rare, net 45, 
net 90. I mean, it could be up to four months. I could start talking to a brand in January and not get that money till the summer. So that's brands, like one extreme example. So you could feel like you're doing so well and you're getting all these brand deals and you're doing so much work, but then you don't see the money for months. So that's brand deals. And then let's go with client work. So I did work for a podcast all of July, let's say. I send them an invoice at the end of, the Ju of July and I don't receive it until it's August 27th. Some of them I still haven't received yet, the end of August, because they could have third, net 30 days. Some of them I'm putting in the contract, like payment due within 15 days, but some of them are bigger corporations where like their accounting department fulfills these things at the end of the month, every month. And like, there's nothing I can do about that. So that's two months and take into consideration the month right after I quit. Then there's two months where I like did the work and I'm waiting on pay. That's three months of no. So now I'm in a groove where I'm like, okay, I'm starting to get paid this week from all of that. Since quitting my job, literally this week, I'm starting to get brand deals coming in, invoices from clients that I finally was taking on in July. And things are starting to like look really good. And that'll hold me over for the next month and hopefully it'll just be a recurring cycle and maybe some clients can pay me within 15 days so now it's gonna start hopefully the ball rolling and like it'll be all good but the first few months was like I literally was raving to Ethan about I'm so excited this brand's working with me or this I just nailed this client after like having a call with them and I can't wait to work on their podcast and look how much money this is. And I'm like bragging to him. And then I'm like, but also can I have $2,000 to pay my bills? And he understood it obviously because I explained all this to him, but it's just, it was kind of a mind fuck for a minute there. And now I feel like, I've gotten so organized. Let me know if you wanna see, like in my plan with me video coming up, I'm gonna show you how freaking organized I got with my project tracker for clients and for brand deals. Like I, it's like fun to fill it out. I have it all by due date. It will go like highlight in red automatically if the payments pass due. Like I'm so organized, it makes it so fun and it makes it so that I feel like I'm totally in control of my schedule and on top of my shit. And it cuts out any of that excess overwhelm that I used to feel. So I'm just feeling really good about everything and I just kind of wanted to give you that really chatty rant because I think a lot of people don't really mention that like I've never heard that explained like when you get paid the difference between that and bi-weekly so anyway that's the tea on that thank you guys for watching I love you so much subscribe if you're new join our community it's only growing and I love you guys so much 